If I sound slightly off, I'm trying to get over this cold. But whatever, Sonic the Hedgehog, the video game franchise that has had fluctuating successes and failures throughout more than this past decade. Many people come up with many reasons as to why people hate Sonic games. Could be for the story, or lack of in some cases, the mechanics, the controls, overall gameplay, even music, etc. I want to discuss the story and writing aspect of Sonic games. Not gameplay, only story and writing, as I'm sure most can surmise or at least see many people come to the statement that many Sonic stories this past decade haven't been living up to some sort of standard for many people. Colors sort of, I mean this kind of loosely soft rebooted the Sonic storytelling formula. Generations hardly had much of a story at all. Lost World story was in my opinion horribly written, and Forces while not to the same degree was also underwhelming and badly written. This is generally how I feel, and while games like Generations are some of my favorites, I can't pretend writing in Sonic games has been all over the place for a while now lately. Sonic stories and writing in Sonic games have been at best subpar in a lot of cases, and not done the series justice in either presenting the characters as accurately or well as possible, usually by banking on one characteristic or quip over 80% of the time, or just poorly writing a story in general. It makes you think, what happened? When did this fall happen? Some would probably expect me to say 06, but after reflecting on 06 for several months quite some time ago, I don't think 06's story is as bad as people made it out to be. Even if you took away the actual plot itself, you can't deny the characters do act in character and are written fine from that general era. In fact, most people are notifying more and more how well Shadow's character growth was in 06. He's Sonic's rival, sure, but he has an established history and development cycle to where he's not always a Vegeta clone. Or Sonic, acting nonchalant and free like the wind with occasional cocky quips, usually towards Eggman, but is not afraid to show a compassionate and caring side while he'll sympathize and connect with people. Black Knight and Secret Ring show this too. Sonic Unleashed is another example as well, and its story is also good with establishing Sonic and Chip Chip's friendship throughout the game, Chip as a character, how every character is written really, the world building with the human characters, the atmosphere, etc. So I'd personally point to Colors as being the first culprit. The story itself isn't anything awful by any means, but looking at other Sonic stories from other mainline games, it definitely tries hard to go on a safer lane than most in terms of ambition and creativity. Eggman builds a space Disney world and uses it to capture alien home worlds and harness their energy to control the Earth. Sonic suspects this another plot, eventually his suspicions were confirmed, he beat Eggman, and minus some cheap, cringy dialogue every here and there, that's literally all of Sonic Colors in a nutshell. It's not far off from most of the classic games and their stories in terms of depth and layers. Even some of the humor, in my opinion, is on the cheaper end of the spectrum, save for like one line near the end of Planet Wisp. And I'm also one of those people that isn't a fan of how Sonic is written. Relies hard on some of that lowbrow humor, it was most of Colors' writing really, not just Sonic. Seemed decently jerkish and overly cocky, like a stereotypical high school jock, and no substance in other areas outside of that. Yeah, I know, Colors was meant to be told like a Saturday morning cartoon, so I'm not dead set on ripping it apart as it's unfair to blame it for something it wasn't trying to achieve, or trying to achieve something else from what I want. It's not the biggest offender with the point I'm making either, but it is a piece of when this shift started. And yes, Sonic's always had that cockiness and an attitude, but that wasn't his entire complete character, which is where Sonic shines brighter, exuding other traits and quips that aren't solely just to stroke his ego. While there isn't much legroom for the writers to work with, how they handled Sonic in colors was not the worst, but not nearly the best either. Sonic Generations is the least offensive with this, as Generations not only had less of a plot than Colors, there was hardly any major instances of bad slash questionable writing or out of character moments. Sonic, for what was there and the context surrounding every cutscene and line of dialogue in Generations voice acted or speech bubbled, were relatively fine, and the way the characters acted was mostly along the lines of passable. That's like the true line of nothing noteworthy on both the good and bad sides of the spectrum. Sonic Lost World, however, is for sure one of the two biggest defenders of this. Lost World basically enforced Colors' humor while also trying to be dramatic and failed completely. Sonic enforcing that cocky demeanor and almost nothing else, the Deadly Six being literal walking caricatures, Tails invoking sudden drama out of nowhere with a sudden inferiority complex despite that going against his character. I honestly hate Lost World more than Forces as a Sonic game if I'm being honest. It's, it's more polished of a game and it probably doesn't deserve the hate I'm personally giving it compared to Forces, but not only does that not excuse how the gameplay overall was handled, the story and writing is some of the worst I've seen in Sonic games, and it's not the only issue I have with it. I'm being serious. 
Sonic Forces, I don't know where to begin. Infinite's whole character only amounting to being a discount DVZ Broly. Classic Sonic serving absolutely no purpose in the game, nor to its story. The characters overall kind of taking a backseat and also serving nothing to the story. The horrible setup with Sonic being in prison for half a year and making all these bold claims with little to no impact almost instantly after. Tails being flanderized hard again after Lost World. It's also a mess, really. Episode Shadow, though, outside the infinite bits, was actually solid. I'll give Forces credit for that, but otherwise, it feels like the writing, characters, and stories of a lot of Sonic games these past 11 years or so have been heavily restrictive of what these stories are capable of, what these characters can do, and what these characters are. Most remember Color's dialogue for trying to be funny. Most remember Lost World, at least those who actually do. For the Deadly Six and Sonic and Eggman teaming up and the Sonic and Tails drama, but even that's multiple problems otherwise. Sonic Forces' writing and story is remembered for how it took itself so seriously with hardly much substance to back itself up. And I'm not saying this is the case for everyone. If you like any of these games, their stories, or just disagree, then I'm not counting you. We all got opinions. I'm just expressing my own but I know I'm not alone with these thoughts. I feel these games' stories aren't up to snuff and deliver some of the most inconsistent, poorly structured plots and biggest jokes of character displays ever, primarily, particularly Lost Worlds and Forces. Part of me wonders if this has to do with the writers, directors, etc. And I'll clarify this now. No disrespect to Ken Pontac and Warren Graff as people, but as Sonic storytellers, I don't believe they're competent. I feel someone else should take the reins with Sonic stories as a whole. But the thing is, part of me suspects it's not just them. Sonic games ever since Yuji Naka and the Split since 06 have had multiple developers either swapping roles for Sonic games or just leaving the team altogether, directors, level designers, map designers, etc. Not only do I think these could have played a factor in Sonic stories, but I feel there's a potential third factor. This isn't a guarantee, I'm making an educated guess with this, but I'm aware Sega's made mandates with how Sonic characters are written, particularly in the comics. Sonic's world to never be referred as mobile certain game characters to never be used, upon many others. I wouldn't be surprised if they made mandates for the games, have leftover mandates we have no idea of, or if any of them were used for them. To add to this, a Reddit user by the name of Mc99 spoke to Ian Flynn regarding Shadow in the Sonic comics a month ago. He posted how Shadow's Vegeta was showing, but the reason Shadow was written like that a month ago is because he intended to write Shadow differently, but Sega denied that way because they want Shadow, and I presume other characters, to be written a certain specific way. And once again, this third assumption is based off the comics, and it may not have anything to do it may have nothing to do with the games at all. I'm aware of Ken Penders causing this massive drama with Sega with the comics a while back, so they're being overprotective with their IP in this instance. I don't partly blame them, but this for all we know could link to the games themselves. It may not, I'm just saying there's a possibility. The mandates that exist or others we may not know about could also have some kind of effect on the games. And while the mandates themselves may not entirely be a culprit, and I'm not defending the asinine writing in the recent Sonic games either, but some writers may feel stumped or limited with these restrictions if this is tied to the games at all. The games I'm about to mention are spin-offs, they're not meant to take themselves seriously, so don't, like, take it seriously, but Team Sonic Racing and Sonic Freeriders are also examples of this. With or without those mandates, with how Sonic games have been written lately and how characters are portrayed, Sonic stories and characters have been heavily restricted and limited on their expression and ambition lately. You noticed how I mentioned Sonic exuding nothing but an arrogant, cocky attitude in the later games and imply how I'm not a fan of that. Again, Sonic is cocky, I'm not denying that whatsoever, but look at games like Sonic Unleashed, Black Knight, Secret Rings, Adventure, Adventure 2, 06 even, and you'll understand what I mean. Sonic Adventure, near the end, he told to call trapping perfect chaos and the Master Emerald wouldn't help anything and fuel his anger and hatred, leaving him in turmoil. Sonic understands the brevity of the situation, but he also acknowledges how chaos feels and how redundant it would be to trap him again. Sonic Unleashed, when Chip finds out his own identity and decides to finish this conflict with Dark Gaia himself, but Sonic pulls him back and asks, 
Do I need a reason to want to help out a friend? Sonic and the Black Knight, that part where he told he'll be seen as one of the most shameful knights for slaying King Arthur, and he acknowledges that fact, if it'll mean exterminating evil for the sake of mankind. Nimue's test for Sonic having to be completed in three days, but he takes a detour because he saw a child crying on the road over his friends trapped and threatened by a lethal dragon. Secret test or not, Sonic didn't know that. Near the end of the game, from the beginning of Sonic's confrontation with Merlina, all the way to the end of the game, regarding eternal and finite life, that entire final act of the game. Compare this to Sonic's character portrayal in recent Sonic games. How often do you get moments like that with Sonic and friends, especially Sonic himself? Very rarely, if at all. An optimistic side of not giving up hope, maybe, but beyond that, it's become scarce. Moments like all I've described encapsulate Sonic's personality perfectly fine while also showing how human and caring Sonic is as a person. I get he's cocky, and I'm not saying make Sonic this big philosophical guru or whatever. But my point is that's not his only character trait. There's more to Sonic's character than some of you may think. Emphasizing Sonic's human side of his character, moments of care, respect, his freedom-like ideology, etc. without just coding his arrogant exterior like a banner over 85% of himself are some of Sonic's best moments. Moments like that, layers to his slash her personality and proper storytelling are some of the biggest reasons people love Sonic. Back in 91, Sonic had a cocky but free teen like Persona. It was the main thing that separated him from Mario back in the day. Look at Sonic CD. It's why he's so beloved and since then, personality and storytelling has evolved since. Not all the time since, some bumps on the road, but you can't tell me the story and how the characters acted in Adventure are worse than how they were in Sonic 1 or 2. You get a lot more out of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, etc. than you ever would in Sonic CD or 3. They're like two separate forms of storytelling in Sonic games, which is why I'm sticking with the modern stories in this video and why I refrain from mentioning Mania, because it's not the same type of story. It's why Shadow is the most popular Sonic character next to Sonic himself, and why people revisit and look back on Adventure 2 so fondly. He had an established backstory, and subsequent games gave him further development and character buildup. The story overall in Adventure 2 was risky and crazy for a Sonic game while also being good. It's why people also look back on Unleashed, Black Knight, even parts of 06, and acknowledge how well written the plots were and how charming these characters were written. Not perfect, but the plots were concise, structured, made sense, and the characters were defined, developed, and charismatic because they had depth. Forces built its story up to be along the same tier as those and failed miserably. I'm of the opinion the gameplay, above all else, should have a solid foundation moving forward and should take higher priority. But the writing and stories in Sonic games make up a big part of Sonic the Hedgehog as a franchise as well. And if there's going to be a focus around that, there should be competent writing and halfway decent plots at the very least. More Sonic games are appreciated for their more ambitious plots and stories as is, even if not all of them stick. Tails is far from a wimpy coward over-reliant on Sonic. Amy is more than just a Sonic-obsessed fangirl. Shadow's more than only solely a rival for Sonic whenever the chance arises. And Sonic's more than just a pretentious prick. That's basically all what I wanted to say. I just wish Sonic characters and stories were even just halfway decent again, because not only does it seem like Sonic Team misunderstands how Sonic games should function, the writing and storytelling staff seem to misunderstand how Sonic characters act and how to write proper stories, even with certain restrictions, unless they're like told to write these characters by only this one soul specific way or something. I don't mean any disrespect, but this is how I feel with these recent games and stories, and I feel like they could be much better if a little more research and checking was done. Thank you for watching, and you're welcome to stick around for more Sonic content in the future. And by the way, being sick sucks. Stay super.